Well, it is officially July, which means we need to go over the top five lures to use in the month of July. I got a couple of old friends and a couple that you may have never even fished. So stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. You guys know that I absolutely love to shop at Sportsman's Outfitters. I love the people there. I love the customer service. And I've also saved a lot of money by shopping over there because they seem to always have the best prices and they always tend to have some sort of sale or deal going on so the next time you go to shop for any of your favorite tackle like the ones that we're going to talk about today check out sportsmansoutfitters.com now pretty much no matter where you live in the country by the time we hit july fish are pretty much in their summer patterns if you live in the extreme north you may be dealing with fish that are still actually on beds but for the most part bass are really in the thick of their summertime patterns now what this means is that the majority of the bass in most lakes are going to be off the bank they're going to be in a little bit deeper water but not all the bass are going to be deep you always have a population of bass that stay shallow and they stay shallow because they eat bluegill they stay shallow because there's grass whatever reasons that they have you're always going to have a population of bass that stay shallow so i have some shallow lures i have some deep lures but let's dive into them right now now the first july lure is one that's a little bit more old school i don't always think that a lot of people throw this in the middle of summer and that is the good old jig and spoon this hunk of lead can actually catch a lot of bass in the month of July. Now I primarily fish the jigging spoon on offshore structure, whether that's humps, ledges, points off the bank and you can catch smallmouth, largemouth or spotted bass on it but one of the biggest reasons that I picked this bait up in July is you start to see some of the young of the year bait fish show up. You start to see some little shad show up, you start to see little bluegills that are showing up and sometimes bass are feeding off a little bait fish in the month of July and this little spoon here it really doesn't have a big profile it kind of mimics one of those smaller bait fish really really well and the other the reason that I like to use it is because this spoon causes a reaction strike and when you are fishing in July especially off the bank a lot of those fish have seen just a lot of pressure a lot of guys and girls have found the same school of fish out there and a lot of people have just been beating those fish up and those fish have seen a lot of your more traditional offshore lures like deep diving crankbaits even big worms and so showing them something that's a little bit different is really really key and the thing about the spoon is that not only is it different but it causes a reaction strike when i work this bait i am making pretty aggressive hops off the bottom and letting that bait kind of fall on a semi slack line and just keep on working it like that and as this thing goes back it just kind of falls and twists and turns and as it is kind of twisting and turning back to the bottom it will kind of send out a flash of light and that flash of light can really draw fish in from a distance do not forget about the standard jigging spoon i know it may seem kind of funny i remember learning this actually from a professional bass fisherman jason quinn on a tv show like 15 years ago and he was absolutely waxing the bass on it and i have caught a lot in the month of july on a jigging spoon now the second lure that you absolutely need to have tied up is a nico rig one of the best things about a nico rig is it is a very effective tool that we have as anglers to fish not only shallow but also in deep water and so no matter what kind of fisherman you are whether you like to fish shallow or like to fish deep a Nico rig is something that you need to be fishing in July. And one of the biggest reasons that I love to fish the Nico rig is that it is a very slow presentation. I mean, you can work this bait extremely slow. And during July, kind of like what we talked about earlier, a lot of bass have seen a lot of the more traditional baits. And I think there's really two main ways to catch bass once you start getting in, the, in July. And that is either make them react, like we talked about with that jigging spoon, or slow way down. And the best way to slow down is with a Nico rig. Now you may be looking at this particular Nico rig and say, hey Tyler, where's your O-ring? And I absolutely always fish a Nico rig with an O-ring. I just so happened to run out of them just recently. So that is why I have this bait set up in this way. Now this particular worm is my all time favorite worm and color to use on a Nico rig. This is a fat six inch robo worm and this color is Margarita Mutilator. But this is one of my favorite 
baits, colors, and everything to fish on the Nico rig. Another type of color that I like is the same worm, but a more of a morning dawn color, kind of that pinkish color. So I don't know exactly why the purples and the pinks work so good on this rig, but I just know that they absolutely do. So do not forget about the Nico rig in July. Now moving on to lure number three, this is one that is pretty familiar to most of us, but you absolutely have to have it tied on in July. And that is a Texas rig and more specifically a Texas rigged tube. Now pretty much anytime I am flipping and pitching, whether I'm flipping and pitching brush or grass or docks, no matter what it may be, a Texas rigged tube is a bait I pick up a ton in July. Now the biggest reason that I like to pick up a tube is for all the reasons that we talked about earlier. Bass have seen a ton of baits once you start getting into July and a tube is just something that a lot of guys don't throw on a Texas rig anymore. I think with the invention of so many of these new cool creature baits, you got beavers, you got D-bombs, you got rage crawls, there's all kinds of soft plastics to flip and guys have kind of gotten away from fishing a tube and a tube is something that is just unique. It really has a very unique fall kind of twist and turns a lot differently than most plastics. And I think that it gets bit a lot in the month of July. Now, this particular tube is my favorite. It's the Strike King flipping tube. The reason that I like it is it has a more solid head on it. So you simply don't go through as many tubes while you're fishing. If you're catching a lot of fish, you can catch quite a few on this particular tube. Now, I typically do not peg my weight. There are situations where I peg it. You know, sometimes if I'm fishing a little bit heavier grass or a little bit more stickier brush, that's when I will peg the weight. But I really believe that if you don't peg it, you you will get a lot more bites. The Texas rig tube, it may be an old bait, but it is a true bait and it gets a lot of bites in July. Now the fourth lure is one of my absolute favorites. I fish it a ton and that is a Spro pop and frog. One of the best ways to catch fish when it gets really, really hot, and in July it gets really, really hot, is targeting shade lines. And that could be shade that are under docks, that could be shade under overhanging trees, but anytime you see shade in the middle of summer, bass are going to be relating to that shade. I have actually made this analogy before, but we as humans, if we're standing out in the middle of a field in the middle of summer, we're getting scorched by that sun. So simply being under a tree and in the shade is a lot more comfortable to us. And it's the same thing with a bass. So I love using a popping frog, skipping it underneath overhanging trees, docks, into that shade and working that bait and catching some really big shallow water fish. Now, another situation that I will use a frog is around grass and specifically like matted vegetation. This time of the year, you start to get a lot of those cheese mats. They really start to develop in the month of July. And a great way to catch bass is throwing a frog across those mats and having that bass blow up in it. Now you may be saying, well, Tyler, don't you use a more pointed nose frog when you're fishing in vegetation? And yes, I do use that more pointed nosed frog, especially when those bass are getting that bait really, really well. But if they are missing your bait a lot, that's one of the reasons that I really like this Spro Pop and Frog is because my hookup ratio is really good on this bait. It's a little bit smaller profile and it just seems like the bass get it really, really well, even when you're fishing around mats. So the Spro Pop and Frog, it's one of my favorites and I absolutely always have it tied on this time of year. Now the 5th July lure is one of my personal favorites. It's it's one that's a little bit more sneaky, not as many guys are fishing that, and that is a Gary Yamamoto hula grub. Now I typically put the hula grub on a jig head. If I'm fishing it off the bank around rock, I like an exposed hook. And if I'm fishing it more around cover, I'm going to put it on a jig head with a weed guard. Now the reason I love this bait so much is because it seems like I can throw a football jig and get very few bites sometimes during July. But if I throw a hula grub, I get a ton of bites in the month of July. And I actually made a full video on this bait right here, the hula grub. And I'm gonna link it right here because it is just a really cool bait and I catch a lot of fish on it. So if you guys enjoy this video, I think you'll like this one too. Thanks for watching, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.